Uh, I'm going to uh, tie an ARF articulated sculpin right now. Uh, and this is going to feature uh, Flyman Fishing Company's sculpin helmet and articulated shank. Uh, so far what I've done is I've put a hook in the vise and you'll see a little piece of plastic tubing. This is just fly tying tubing that I've put over the hook point. I'm going to have a lot of marabou on this fly and what this will do is protect me to make sure that I don't stick my hook uh, thumb with that hook point uh, once I get all that marabou on there and this sort of hidden. I'm just going to start by putting down a little bit of thread <clears throat> and this is not going to cover the whole hook shank. I'm going to put a little thread to about the middle right there. This is a size uh, 4 hook and I'm going to take just some real inexpensive um, saddle hackle and what this hackle does is actually it's a support mechanism for the marabou tail on the fly. So I'm going to tie this in in the back or in the at the back of the little thread band that I made and uh, get my hackle plier, grab the tip and I'm just going to make a, a nice dense little skirt or collar right here. Just about even with the little bit in front of the hook point actually. And this doesn't have to be pretty. Um, the color isn't incredibly important. It should be, it could, should kind of match the color scheme, the general color scheme of your fly. But you'll see I've got hackle fibers going all over the place. And I'm not that worried about it because not much of it's really going to show. But what it's going to do, the, what, uh, what happens to marabou when it gets wet is it kind of clumps all down and gets small. Um, to help preserve the bulk of the body of this fly, I put this saddle hackle underneath it and it supports it, helps hold it out away from the hook. So I get the illusion of bulk without a lot of material. And it doesn't hold a lot of water. It's easy to pick up out of the water. It's easy to cast. Um, water flows through these materials very well, so um, it sinks very quickly. <clears throat> This, uh, the marabou that I'm using is bar dyed marabou. Uh, it's pretty common stuff. You can get it almost everywhere. Um, and this is mainly a brownish color pattern. So um, I've got some brown dyed marabou. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strip away the fibers down to where the stem starts to get fairly thick. It's difficult to wrap where the stem is real thick down here. So I just want to get rid of the marabou down to there. I'm going to get my finger slightly wet and stroke the marabou down and form a little V where the stem starts to get really, really thin. From here on out, the stem is fairly thin and it's hard to wrap without breaking it. So. I get rid of the real thick stem, I get rid of the real thin stem, I save that stem in between, I tie the feather in by the tip, wrap it down good, and I'm going to grab the butt of the feather oops, with my hackle pliers. Then I'm going to fold the hackle. What folding the hackle is, see the barbs right now are just kind of pointed all over the place. If I were to try and wrap this, They'd be pointed all different directions. I want them to generally flow to the back of the fly. So what I'm going to do, again, I'm going to just moisten my fingers a little, pull back on the fibers gently so you don't break the stem, and pinch them against the stem so that they all sort of tend to point to the back of the fly. And that's called folding hackle. Now as I wrap this, I still have to manipulate it a lot of times by stroking it back like this, and this is where the protection for the hook point comes in. But see how they generally try to lay to the back of the fly, and it makes a much neater wrap, and it's much easier to work with. So we'll tie that off up near the front. Tie it down nice and good. 
clip it off and just whip finish right there and that's the back half of the fly. Now if I was tying a lot of these um, I wouldn't do this step and then do the next step. What I would do is I would tie a dozen for say for instance on the hook like this and then I would go to the next step and tie a dozen of the next step. This marabou is also just a little bit longer than I would like and you can cut it with scissors if you want but you'll get just a slightly less sharp appearance if you just take your fingernails and try and break that. So you can break it back so it's a little bit shorter and it doesn't have that real blunt appearance back there like if I cut it with my scissors. I'm going to pop that out of the vise and this is a product uh, from Flyman Fishing Company uh, called Articulated Shank. They come in three different lengths uh, and they're sort of a replacement for um, Waddington shanks or for what's fairly popular now which is putting in a hook, tying uh, on the hook and then breaking the or cutting the point off. With this product all I do is put it in the vise, you can open that up just a little bit, slide the hook on there and now I've got my articulation. There's that freedom of movement right there in the back of the fly. Once we've got that mounted in there, I'm going to do the same steps on the back of the shank that I did on the, um, on the actual hook. And that is I'm going to start with just an inexpensive strung saddle hackle. Get that prepared. And again, it's just going to be a support piece for the marabou that I'm going to wrap on here. So it's not a real gorgeous feather. It's not a real expensive feather. But it does serve a purpose. So get that tied in. Just tie in a little skirt or a little collar. And you can see right now where that guard on the hook comes in really handy. Oops. That's, that is the one problem you do sometimes get with cheap hackles is the stems aren't very strong. And they do tend to break on you. So we get to practice wrapping hackle. Okay, but all the stroking that I'm seeing, that you're seeing me do right now, um, without that guard on the hook point, um, that would be a lot less pleasant because there's been probably already six or eight times that I've felt the end of that rubber hit the side of my finger. And we'll get another same, same marabou feather that we had before and do the same exact thing. So I'm going to go in here. Now this one's a little bit longer and I can use some of these fibers down at the base for something else later. So rather than just stripping them off, I'm going to cut that and just take that heavy base material, set it aside, continue to prepare the hackle the way we did the first one. So we'll get out to the tip here, pull those fibers all forward. Tie it in by the tip, right in front of the saddle. Tie it down good, and I'm going to fold it again. So, get my hackle pliers, get a hold of the butt. Pull those back. Get a little crimp. Fold them. Now this one wants to twist on me. So this I'm going to have to work on a little bit harder than the first one. But you just keep stroking the fibers back so that they lay towards the back of the fly. 
I'm not matting them down. I'm just stroking them so they want to lay to the back. Now it's not quite this pronounced in the water, but you can already see how that saddle hackle tends to push the marabou out away from the hook shank. See, I can push it down like that and it tends to pop back up. And that makes a fuller fly with less material. I'm just going to put down a little bit of thread cover up that stem. And I'm going to do a technique called uh, stack dubbing. So I'm going to start with the Senyo's laser dub. Uh, it's a, a fairly long fibered dubbing uh, with just a little bit of flash in it. And I'm going to take a small amount. Again, this is going to be a very sparse bodied fly, but it's going to give the impression of a very bulky fly. I'm going to take some of this, and the problem with it right now is the fibers are going all different directions. It's mixed dubbing, and I want them parallel like it was coming off a hank of yarn. So I'm going to pull these, and if you've ever mixed dubbing, you pull the fibers, put them in an angle to each other, and then pull them together again, and it pulls the fibers together in all these different angles. To get them straightened out, you do just the opposite. You pull them and set them back parallel to each other. And after about three or four times of that, you've got roughly parallel fibers here. It's starting to look more like uh, material that came off a hank. So I just take the ones that are a little bit long at that point, pull those out, even them up, spin it around. Do the same thing on the other end. And I'm going to stack it just like deer hair. I'm not going to let it go around the hook point, hook shank. I'm going to stack it so it stays right on the top. I'm going to flip the fly over. And a nice, nice feature of this technique is that I can take, this is the same material but a different color. This is a light color. So just like a bait fish, I can now do a pattern with a dark top and a light bottom. So I'm just going to repeat these steps. Even the tips up a little bit. Set it right on top. Anchor both of them down. Now to get a little more bulk to the fly, I'm going to pull that up and pull that down. I'm going to dam up in front of that. So I've kind of stood those fibers up. And now I've got a real big uh, body look to this fly. I'm actually going to leave big gaps in between the clumps and I'm going to do I'm going to do that same clump three times on this shank. So I'm going to have a real nice full bodied fly um, without a great deal of material. If you did this with rabbit, say wrapped a zonker strip on here, you'd get uh, you know a nice flowing full body. The problem with rabbit on the strip is the leather gets wet and it's like casting a sock. Is this will stay nice and light. On the top, I'm going to use even a third color. This is kind of a tannish color. And what it's going to give me is kind of some modeling pattern to the top of the fly, too. So if you've seen sculpins, um, you know they're not a solid color. You see a lot of uh, spots and bars and odd patterns on them. And I just want to mimic that. I'm mixing a lot of different colors together as I work. Put that on top, just like we did with the first batch. Pull it back and dam it up. Come forward just a little, and we'll make one more, one more dubbing clump right here. I'm going to go back to the dark brown and. The laser dub comes in a lot of different colors, so uh, you know you can match the bait fish in your area, or if you're steelhead fishing or something like that, maybe you want to go with some pinks and purples and some wilder colors. Just clump on the top. Clump 
up to the bottom. Get the tips evened up. And wrap that last one on. Get everything stood up. Work your thread in front of it. Dam it up a little bit. And then to get everything kind of flowing back so the fibers start to interlock, this is a nylon um, bristle dubbing brush. And I'm just going to go in here and start brushing all these materials back. And it sort of interlocks into itself so you get more of a backwards flowing shape to the whole thing and the colors kind of blend and mix together and it gives it a little bit more of a bullet shape than those three individual clumps that were standing up there before. I'm going to pull the dubbing out of that brush and hang on to it. We're going to use that in a minute. Um, the next thing that I want to put in is just a little bit of crystal flash, some root beer over pearl crystal flash, or whatever your favorite brand is. And I'm just going to grab a few strands. I don't typically put a lot on these. Muddlers or uh, sculpins are not real, real bright fi uh, fish. They don't have a lot of shine to them, but let's put a little bit of flash in there. Wrap this one over then the other side. Trim it so they're both about the same length. And you notice we're getting real close to the front of the hook on this. And we actually do want to crowd the hook on this a little bit more than um, what uh, you would normally think. Uh, the next material I'm going to put on here, this is just some sh strung schloppen. And I look for some barred material. Um, again, I want to I want to go with that modeled kind of pattern. The schloppen has a fairly soft fiber and a pretty long fiber. So it gives a little more motion to the fly. Prepare that. And wrap it down good. Get my hack applier tip of that and as you go with the schlop and it's got so much um, flu on it that the fibers really stick together so if you just kind of stroke them they'll come apart and act more like individual fibers as you go forward and I'm gonna go all the way to the hook eye on this and as I go a little bit further forward I don't spend quite so much time primping them because as I get farther forward I'm more um, just trying to fill in this area of the hook and put some bulk on it and as, when I put the sculpin helmet on it in a minute you'll see that we cover up all a lot of that ugliness there so tie that off get rid of it And just hold it back and tie back on it just a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit of this. Uh, this is the laser dub that I pulled out of the dubbing brush. Just so going to take a little of that and put a collar on the head of the fly. It doesn't matter what color you use here. We're going to cover all this up. Okay. I'm actually going to whip finish and take the thread away. Now, um, this is a product called Fish Skulls. It's, it's again, Flyman Fishing Company. And they make, uh, or this is Sculpin Helmets, I'm sorry. They also make the fish skulls and the articulated shanks. This is more of a flat profile. I've already glued the eyes on this. They come with uh, eyes that you can glue into these sockets yourself. I've already glued the eyes onto this one. 
The other thing you'll notice is that the inside of this, there's a big hollow cavity in here. Uh, and so all this material that I crammed up to the front of the hook is to help me fill that hollow cavity so that the head sits on the fly better. So the first thing I'm going to do is test to make sure it fits. So I'm just pushing it on there. Make sure it goes on. Everything looks good. I can pull it back off. And then I can get, uh, this is just super glue that you can buy. Um, at the fly shop or wherever there's nothing special about it. It's a it's a gel So it's a gap filling super glue uh, I'll put a couple drops of that on Just one on each side maybe Then I'll get my fish skull Put it back on over the dubbing And the last thing I want to do is I want to give this kind of a mechanical uh, lock on the front of it. So I'm going to build up a little thread dam right there. And I could do that with my brown thread. Um, I dropped my other spool here. What I like to do is uh, put a little hot spot on the front of the fly. So a lot of times I'll use this fluorescent orange thread. And I call this, uh, when, I put, when I put the fluorescent orange on, I call that my fly lipstick. So we'll get a little, little bright mouth out of this fly here this way. But that's just big enough that it's larger than the opening in the fish skull or the sculpin helmet. Um, and it'll help hold that on there a little bit better. Okay.